So hi everyone. Um, as you heard, my topic is about word clouds and I want to tell you something about it. So a short note about myself. I'm actually from a computer science background. So I just slowly shifted towards digital humanities. Um, but the, um, I'm focused on computational methods in the digital humanities. So our resource group um, works on for example, um, text collation. So we have to deal with multiple text um, witnesses or text versions. And this was the driving factor behind um, this research. So we want to display a word cloud for every text, not a single one. And here's a typical word cloud, um, as you might already seen. So I call them static word clouds. So you just um, paste in the whole text as a whole, and you get out a static view of the words. And they are used to show the supposedly most relevant words of a text um, according to some measure. And there is a different type of word clouds. I call them interactive word clouds. And there is actually, oh, I was told to show um, an example of that. And here is an example. So <laughs> our research group um, created this uh, project called ExileNet. And there you can find an interactive word cloud. So it actually was about um, the correspondence of different people before and during the Second World War. And um, the, the people are who went to exile. So in the word clouds, um, there is the correspondence displayed, so where the letters were written and received. And the interactive part is actually at the bottom, so you see a timeline and you can pick two dates, and only the letters inside this time span are displayed. Yes, so we take this concept of the interactive word cloud and we try to move it over to our um, collation tool called Lera. And um, here's a screenshot of Lera. Um, and actually, we have, oh, first of what you see in this example or in the screenshot, at the top we have something called cat view. So we have a basic overview over the text. Um, in this example, we have just one text. Below there are the word clouds, and below that there is a text, so we can have a closer look at the actual text. And what's the interactive part? So you can, uh, <laughs> again, um, drag a window, so you can span a window from, say, paragraph 1 to paragraph 12 or something, and then you can move the window to only display these words that are um, part of the selected um, paragraphs. So the, <laughs> the window is inactive. And the actual challenge is that we require a lot of speed because if you think about it, the static word clouds, they have a lot of time to compute an optimal lay layout. So if the user or the algorithm takes some minutes, it's not that hard or that bad for the user, but in an, an interactive environment, you have to be like, instant. So the user doesn't have to wait. So if the user drags the window one step further, and he must wait minutes, it's not feasible. So speed is our main concern. And also the required space is actually a problem because, again, for setting word clouds, if you take the te top 10 words, for example, by relevance of the whole text, it's just 10 words. But you have multiple windows um, across the whole text, and you take the top 10 words of every window, it's much more than 10 words, actually. Yeah, and the worst part are the moving words. They introduce some cognitive overhead, and I want to show an example on that. So here we have a word cloud, just some basic words um, with an online generator. And let's say we focus on these three words, so easy, data, and visualization. And now there's interactive part, so we move the window a couple steps further, and you might end up with this word cloud. And now we're interested in these three words. So instinctively, we think, yeah, OK, we you see my cursor. No. Oh, yeah. So you might think, OK, mm, I'm interested in this word. So it might be that the word is in the same location, so about here. But actually, the word is not there. Yeah. So you might wonder, and you look around, and actually you find the word below here, so below the word cloud. And if we do the same thing for word easy, it's actually down here. So it moved, it switched its position. And the <laughs> worst part is that the visualization, or the word visualization, um, if you look around the whole cloud, you can't find it actually because it's not a part of the cloud. So it 
it's gone. But you have to look at each individual word to realize, realize that. So here's the solution, if you will. <laughs> um, so you might say, okay, so there's something called spatial stability that we want, and you might say, so what's the problem? We just use um, every word, and we assign an individual position for each word. It's a basic idea, but actually there's a problem because we have to assign for every word in the vocabulary vocabulary one specific um, location. And you can imagine if you have a long text, there are many words in one text, so <laughs> it gets worse with long text. So there's a basic idea that you can create actually groups of words that never occur together. So they can, uh, can share the same location. So essentially we're using um, we're using positions, and instead of words, we um, place groups. And then in the end, we just swap out words um, if needed. And I want to walk you through a short example of this. So here we have um, text which I worked on uh, called Rumpelstiltskin. It's a fairy tale, John fairy tale. I think you've heard of it. <laughs> it's from 1855, and I just translated it for this example, and um, we want to focus on just these four words, Miller, Daughter, King, and Gold. And now the question is how we build these groups. So the main idea is you build like a table, and like mm, it goes like for every word in the vocabulary, you create a column. So, the cursor. Um, here we have our four interesting words, but actually you do this for every word in the vocabulary. And then we have our text, uh, which is split into segments or phrase, um, paragraphs, and we introduce one line for each phrase, yeah. for each segment. And then we have some like rule when we input or oh, insert a one or a zero. And we insert a one if the word occurs in the segment, and the zero if it's not. So, for example, we can see in this table that the word Miller occurs in the first segment, also in the second segment, but not in the third segment. It's basically just it. Okay, now we have the um, table for the window size of 1. And we can use that to create these groups. So, this is the bas basic um, table which we use for the grouping. Okay, how we do this? Um, um, we create a second table where uh, the cursor, where we start a new group. So, and we want to put all words in this group that never occur together. So, for example, if we start a new group, every entry is zero at the beginning, and then we take the first word and try to put it in this group. So, in this example, or for example, we take the word Miller and try to put it in a group. Um, and imagine here are all zeros, <laughs> and we just copy over the ones from the Miller word um, into this group. Then we are left with one um, zero at the end, and we try to insert the next word, daughter, and we see, okay, here's a one, but the group has also a one here, so we have, a, we have two ones, and the two words would co occur, so um, they would be placed at the same location. So they, um, the word daughter can't be added to the group, and also the word king, because, so you, you can actually see it in this left table, the word miller and king would occur together in the second segment, so they can't share one position. Then we have a look at the word gold, and we see that we can place it in this first group, actually, so we can copy over the last one, and now the group is full, we all... So every row has a one in it, and the group is finished, and we just um, continue with the new group, group two, which is also at the beginning, and we try to put words in again. And this uh, seems like a lot of work, but actually computers are fast, and <laughs> especially this operation can be uh, it's really fast. So the check if words can be added is just um, an, uh, like a logical end over the vectors, so the columns, and the, um, the adding of the word to a group, so copying over the ones, is actually just a logical OR over the vectors. And these are binary operations, so they are really, really fast. 
So layout-wise, we used um, nothing special, only the Wordle algorithm. So <laughs> it's using a spiral layout, and the Wordle algorithm goes like, you have these spirals, and you pick um, places in the spiral, and you just place words, and if any two words intersect, you just check the next place, and that's basically it. And the only difference to the original layout is that we don't place words specifically, we just place the groups. And now the question is um, how we can generalize this to multiple word clouds. So here's a more realistic view of Lera. Here we have multiple text witnesses. Again, at the top we can see there's cat view with seven different versions of Rumpelstiltskin. skin. <laughs> and at the bottom we can see there's the text and some differences are highlighted. And the black mm, font or not highlighted parts are equal. So, and we want to show a word cloud for each um, um, text individually, but uh, they should also be linked position-wise. So the question is how we can generalize our algorithm or our procedure to this multiple word cloud scenario. And we just have to actually change small things. So first of all, um, for the columns, we not just take some words, but uh, the words with vocabulary of one text, but we um, create a vocabulary over all text. So this introduces some more columns, but actually not that many because we have to deal with or we deal with similar texts, so they normally contain and similar words. Okay, so what's actually changing is this um, when we with this rule when we insert ones or zeros. Um, and let's imagine we have the tables for the individual text here, and we want to create one table for the for all the word clouds. So in the end, we have just one table for all word clouds. And we change the rule, so we, in, um, we insert one, that the word occurs in a segment in any text. So it's just a small change. For example, if we have a look at this entry for the word Miller, and we check if it's a one or zero for segment one. We just check the, check the individual tables. If here is a one, we just insert a one. Oh, better. And um, we check here, here's a one, here's a zero. So the same cell, if you will. And if any of these cells have a one in it, we just insert a one. That's it. And uh, you repeat it for all the cells, and then you're done. So um, this works great, um, but I also have to be, oh, we have to calculate some things for all the word clouds or for each word cloud individually, actually. So the, um, you, for example, the frequency, so the relevance measure has to be calculated for each cloud individually, um, and that's uh, not parallel, parallelized yet. So there's some performance left on the table, but this could be done with some much work and yeah, we have to work around some Ruby limitations. <laughs> okay. And I see I have some time left, but I want to show a small demo for you. So this was the theoretical part. Yeah. <laughs> now comes the practical part. Can you see it? So again, this is our Lera tool, um, like from the screenshot. And I reload the page through. You can see there's no magic involved or something. I changed something. <laughs> and you can enable the word clouds if you click here. And let's turn down the top X words and refresh the view. And then you can create this window. And you can see the words cloud are updated. And now keep an eye, well, choose one word and keep an eye on it. So it should stay at the same position.
So you see, if the word keeps its position, it's much easier to follow the word through the text. And um, if we are here, um, you can watch out for the word straw or straw. Um, it changed its color during the text. So it's sometimes black and sometimes blue. Blue means, or oh, here's a color scale at the top, and blue means it's around, um, or it occurs around 10 times in this window. Another word which is um, a bit bigger than the other, so the frequency is uh, a bit higher, is the word gold, or gold. And you might think that they are connected, or they have high frequency, and maybe they are connected. And if you know the fairy tale, you know, and the queen, which is the daughter of the miller, actually has to convert the straw into gold in order to keep, uh, stay alive. And another interesting thing that you can discover is in the end, there is a word Namen or names, and actually you can click on them and they are highlighted in every cloud. And also in the cat view, so we can see where the word occurs in text. And if we direct the window again, we see the word Namen or names stays there, or appears at the end, but then it stays there, but actually the name Rumpelstilskin only appears at the end. So, if you know, again, if you know the fairy tale, you know the queen has to guess its name, um, but only in the end she knows that the name is from the um, okay. Some more time. So, I will show another small example. If you decrease the window size to 10, you know it's um, pretty fast, at least in this example. <laughs> Change the window size, it's like very snappy. Um, if you go again to the end, I know it's a little bit small, but I can't zoom any further because then you don't see all variants. Uh, again. Yeah. So, at the end, the queen guesses the different names, and you can also see it here. So, she guesses like Major and Caspar and so on, and you can notice this is not the case for the first text. So if you scroll through, you also you see all the names, um, but in the first text she doesn't mention any names. She thinks over it two days, and just in the last day, um, someone told her that the name is Rumpelstiltskin. Yes. Okay. Okay. This was the demo, and I see I have some time left. So I'll switch back to the slides and show some backup slides. And of course, we are um, a bit self critical, so there are still um, some problems left and some future work. And for example, we haven't dealt yet with some uh, the limited space, especially if you have, you, if you, if you have multiple text um, versions side by side, the um, available space gets smaller and smaller, so you have something, something to do about it, but we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> we just use the space that we have. And another problem, especially for German, is that they are very long words, and so compound words, and um, they can sometimes go out of the available space. So um, our idea is we just truncate them, and if you hover over them, you can see the whole word or something like that. Another thing that was oh, actually a feedback from a reviewer was the colors are not that optimal, so the color scheme might be um, tweaked some or something. So. Um, it's also an kind of an accessibility problem, so not every can, everyone can see the colors, that's good. So maybe we just um, remove the colors completely and stick to the font size to um, show the frequencies. And another problem um, that occurred to us is that if two words have the same Y coordinate, you might confuse them with two separate words. So if two words have the, um, on, on the same Y coordinate and they are actually two words, but they show closely, or show it at the same position, and just offset x-wise, and then you might think it's just one big word, but it's actually not. 
And one solution we thought of was we add some jiggles to the Y-coordinates so you have uh, different baselines for every word, so you can't confuse them. And another thing, um, the group thing I showed you, it's actually pretty fast, but not pretty optimal, so it's just a greedy solution, and maybe this part can also be improved, but luckily for me, and it's a, this is assigned to a bachelor thesis, and it's off of my desk, so I have at least six months um, not to think about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Yeah, and this concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention.